Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making a knife rack. I've wanted to make this for a long time because my block is um, a little grody. Let's dive in. It is a fun project to make magnetic wood. Yay! <laughs> no, this is actually going to be made out of some 100-year-old uh, quarter sawn white oak. Uh, beautiful stuff, and it will match nicely with the cabinets. I have uh, a bunch of magnets that I bought, and I thought a, a string of a single of these would be enough, uh, but the wood ended up being a little bit too thick, and I didn't want to take any thinner. So in the end, I ended up uh, piling them up, but we'll see that a little bit later. So we're trying to figure out how long do we need them to be, how much space do we have to work with, and it's mostly determined by the cabinet that they're going to be attached to. That makes mine a about 11 inches long. Actually, I think in the end they ended up being about uh, 10 and a half inches long. So I laid them out on the sticks and cut them to length, uh, marking off of the reference edge that I planed smooth earlier. A lot of my projects, this one really is kind of an experiment. So I'm just playing around with it and seeing what comes out. That is when I find I have the most fun in the shop. I don't have any plans, I don't have anything I'm following, I'm just experimenting and playing with it and seeing what works. Sometimes the projects come out and sometimes they don't. In this case, it actually ended up working. There are a few things I would change, and I'll talk about those as well. But it's a great way to learn and just experiment and have a lot of fun. That's what the shop is really all about. So after cutting these to length, I started laying out where the magnets would be in them. And I wanted a groove for the magnet to sit into so that the magnet would end up being about a sixteenth of an inch away from the face of the wood. I um, also found out that I really didn't like this bigger blocky look. And uh, they are originally about two and a half inches, and I wanted to make them about an inch and a half. Um, so I ripped them down. Um, in retrospect, I think this is one of the places where I should have kept them a little bit bigger, put the magnets a little bit farther apart that would give us more friction on the face, hold the knives a little better. But also also give us a little bit more material to put the wood into, but I wanted to make them a little smaller, so we're going to experiment. And I wouldn't go much smaller than an inch and a half, uh, but if I did do them at somewhere around uh, two inches, I think that would be just about perfect, at least for the magnets that I'm using. So once we get that ripped down, we can plane down the side, and man, I love those medallia arrays. One of the reasons why white oak is, is one of my favorites. It's just absolutely beautiful. And then you hit it with oil, and oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to knock down all the corners, make sure that they're, uh, they're not going to be putting splinters into you. And now we're going to cut grooves for the magnets to go into. So I need to find grooves that are a little bit larger than the magnet. Um, I had one um, iron that was almost exactly the right width. Uh, but this are. would have wedged the magnet in there a little tighter than I wanted. Really so close. I went up one size so that they had a little bit of slop. And that means we're going to have to sharpen it. And these are really quick and easy, just like a chisel, just a little bit more uh, being careful with it. Um, I initially started out with the 55, uh, excuse me, with the 50, as uh, it's really easy for doing grooves. The problem with the 50 is I realized that you can only go down about a half inch with the 50. It just doesn't have the, um, the depth you need because it has other material in there. So I ended up changing it out to the 45, and that way I could cut all the way down. Um, to actually work with these small pieces, I could put them between dogs, but because they're only an inch and a half wide, I can't get them that close to the edge of the uh, of the bench. And so I ended up using some double-sided tape and putting it up against a uh, plane stop, and that allows me to, to work on it. Double-sided tape is a great way to hold things on the bench and just uh, work with little things particularly. Around here, I switched over to the Stanley number 45. Um, this one can go down to almost a full inch. Um, and I only needed it to go down to about 7 eighths of an inch, actually a little bit more than 7 eighths of an inch. And so we can set it up. I just matched it to the groove that we were making with the 50. And then I can work it down until I eh, want it about that deep. So we can adjust the depth stop to stop it just before we go all the way through. I want to have about a 16th of an inch of wood on there. Um, especially with, with, uh, with regular magnets, a 16th of an inch is about all you want when you're holding knives. You don't want the knives to be falling. Uh, I could possibly get away with an eighth inch, but a 16th inch makes it a little easier. At this point, we start the experimentation. And yeah, with one magnet, it holds my marking knife well, but it won't hold my heaviest um, kitchen knives. So I could put it like that and hope it would hold, but yeah, I need a little bit more material than just that one. So I thought, what if I put two magnets on there and doubled up the thickness? And that still wasn't quite enough. So that means I need more. Um, and then I thought, wait a second, well, what if I ran another groove so that I could have multiple pieces on there? And that's why I ended up having four of them. And uh, this one was actually testing the thickness. I ended up going just a little bit thinner. But uh, in the end, I decided to make a second groove on here. And it was somewhere around this point I realized, wait a second, I don't have any meat to then screw into. I'm going to have to put a really tiny screw into this middle divider. And uh, well, there's another problem we'll have to come again later. But again, we're just experimenting and playing with. 
So we have two grooves here. Each one will have two tracks of magnets, and that will hold everything together. So we're going to test it with just the two magnets that way. Not quite enough, but if we stack them up and double up doubles, then they will actually work well. I also played with which orientation of the uh, uh, north and south needs to go. Should they push together? Should they push apart? Um, and I found that pulling them together, it gives you a tighter field, which is a stronger field close to it. Um, having them pushing apart expands the field and makes it much bigger, but it becomes a little bit weaker. Um, so actually having them pull together is what we wanted. But uh, the answer is double up the magnets and put four on there, and that holds really nicely. So um, doubled magnets and double tracks actually is right about right. And this is where I would want to make it a little bit bigger so I'd have more material to put a screw into. Uh, but we're going to experiment with what we have, and I ended up making this work. So now that I have these tracks, I need to block the ends. I don't want to show that coming through. And originally I was going to put in some more white oak, but you're always going to be able to see it. Especially with white oak, you'll see the medullary rays going through it. And so I ended up trying to do something a little bit more pretty. We're going to use a little bit of purple heart. Yay! I love purple heart. It doesn't always stay purple, and this one won't because it's so close to the window, um, but it will always be darker than the white oak, and so it will have a nice contrast to it. So I'm going to rip down and then plane this down so that it is exactly the same fit as the end of the slot, and it will fit nicely and tightly into those. Um, and these will stop the magnets from coming out the end, uh, as well as cap it off so you don't actually see the magnets. Now, around this point, I was realizing, wait a second, I'm going to need more magnets. I only got enough to make these uh, with a single layer, so I had to go order uh, a few more. Uh, ended up, in total, being 16 magnets for each of the racks, which is a lot of magnets. Um, I wish I had gotten them a little bigger, because bigger would be better. Um, I will leave down in the link links to the magnets I got, as well as links to the magnets I wish I had got. Um, because with the ones I wish I got, I could have gotten away with um, less. <laughs> but that's why we learn. We experiment and play with it. So with the Purple Heart, we're going to cut it down into these little quarter-inch blocks and then slide them down into the end with a little bit of epoxy, holds them in place, and just like that, we have a, um, well, kind of a finished block. Put a little squeeze clamp on it, and we're good to go. So we'll set those aside to cure, order more magnets, and come back to this. Then about a week later, we can pull them out and I can start putting them all together. First thing we need to do is clean up the ends because the epoxy is sticking out there and so I'm going to use a chisel, bevel down, and just knock off the big junk pieces and then I can flush up the ends so that they're right on there. I could come in through with a chisel and clean that up, um, but I don't really need to. It's just the back. It's going to go up against the cabinet as long as it's smooth enough so you don't see it. We're going to use the shooting board to shoot the ends nice and clean, and then we can chamfer all the edges with a nice round chamfer on there. <laughs> round chamfer. Uh, so yeah, chamfers, they're what, uh, what, what separate us from the animals, and they, they actually work really well on this. It looks good, and it's just kind of a sharp way to do it. So I'm going to start putting all of the magnets down into place and locking them down in. At this point, be very, very, very careful, uh, especially if you're working with bigger ones, you don't want them to jump out and bite you. I could put in some epoxy, but in this case, I want something that's a little bit more rubbery, and, and that's the answer is uh, hot glue. I know this weird device has to be pushed into a hole in the wall and it heats up all by itself without fire. It, it was really weird, but uh, it works out really well. And after that point, these are basically done. We're going to apply boiled linseed oil, let that soak in as much as it wants, apply more, let it soak in, and get a nice rich tone. Makes all of the medullary rays pop out. And uh, once that's done, we can apply a little bit of paste wax, and they work really well. You can see how some of these push together, some of them pull apart, and we can make sure they're exactly where we want them to be. Now, screwing this in is going to be a little more difficult because I need to screw into that tiny little middle piece. So I'm going to start by drilling a tiny little hole at three points along this. This will be uh, sit um, to fit in a number six screw and the number six screw will bite into it and if it does expand the wood a little bit it'll be pushing into the hot glue on either side. So it actually is a nice fit. The problem is I need to find out exactly where these holes are. So I'm going to cut off some finish nails and then drive those into the hole point up. I can then push these finish nails into the side of the cabinet and know exactly where the holes are so that they, might, they line up absolutely precisely. Because with tiny little screws, it's important that your holes line up very well. Otherwise, you, when you push them off to the side, you're going to have issues. So I'm just going to eyeball this one, make it about right there, and then we're going to tap it on with a mallet, and this will transfer those marks into the side of the cabinet. 
And uh, with that in place, then we can come back in and drill holes. This hole is a little bit larger than the threads of the screw I want to use. Uh, my cabinet was three quarter inch thick and I wanted them to countersink in a little bit. So I'm coming up with a drill head that's a little larger than the head of the screw to countersink them in a little bit more. The screw can then pop through with a little bit of wax on it and that makes them turn in. Uh, especially with tiny little Phillips head screws, um, putting wax on is a, a very, very useful thing. Even more important if they're brass, but with the steel they, they work pretty well. So we can work around the door, drive in the screw from the back, and put one in each. And then repeat the process for the other two racks until they're all nice and tight. We can make sure they work and voila, they actually hold knives. Exciting. Yeah, um, they hold them handle up or handle down, and uh, we can kind of experiment and play with it and see where we want to put the handles. Um, yeah, um, you can see what happens. <laughs> so we'll put the last one on here, um, hang up the knives, and that's about it. And then I can get rid of that grody knife block that's been taking up counter space and just filling up with moisture and whatever else. But uh, I really like this. Um, now the question is whether or not my wife likes it, but it doesn't really matter because I do most of the cooking. So, yeah, it's my knife block. So there you have it, uh, knife wall, magnetic wood. Ah, I love it. Um, yes, this is just kind of nice. I just to be careful not to grab the knives, although I might end up doing some switching so all the blades are together. Um, but uh, yeah, I really like this. I, it's easy, simple, they hold well. I'm uh, very, very pleased with how this all came together. So yeah, magnets, wood, they really come out well and it kind of matches in with it. So I love this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's kind of a simple, easy project. Um, a little bit of fun to do on a weekend and get your knives out of a knife box so you can actually see them all. If you have any other questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, comments, throw those down below. I do read through all the comments and I answer as many of them as I can get to. So thank you for that. That does actually help out the channel as well as hitting the like, share, subscribe. Those things help get us in front of more people and help the channel to grow. On top of that, you'll notice a whole bunch of people on the other side of those knives that are scrolling by. They are the patrons on Patreon. Together with them and members here on the channel, you guys are the ones who make this happen. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or become a member, you can click the little join button down below or click the link in the description. And I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Check this out. Now that, that's a sharp project. You may have noticed in this particular project, I used my demon yellow brace, as well as the demon to blue brace. Oh no, it's time for an exorcism. Where's my Stanley number 666?